Captains of Industry, brought to you by Airtel. With over 12 years' experience working in Australia and New Zealand, Sunil Joshi has some colourful stories to tell, I'd imagine. Africa is definitely a very different animal for him, but his leadership of Tata Communications Global Enterprise Solutions business in emerging markets for Middle East, North Africa and the Asia-Pacific region has given him some sense of tempering his expectations. Sunil Joshi is the CEO of Neotel, four months in the hot seats, and he's our captain of industry. Tonight, thanks for staying with us. You're a Kiwi. Yes. Born in Egypt, yes. living in South Africa. Ooh, how did that happen? <laughs> it's a long story. I don't <laughs> think that the program's long we, enough. We've we, <laughs> we got time. <laughs> Shortened version. No, but my father was in the, uh, the diplomatic corps. Okay. So as he was posted in various geographies, um, uh, we also tagged along. So I was born in Egypt, and we spent about three years there, and uh, about f four years in Trinidad and Tobago, West Indies, and wow. six years in the U.S., and three years in Georgetown, Guyana, two years in Somalia, and a bit in India, and a bit in New Zealand, and Two years Australia. in Somalia. You know, I've been to Somalia, and I remember flying in from Addis, and how the terrain changed from it being very fertile yes. in Ethiopia to being arid and dry. It's yes. harsh terrain, it is. Somalia, but the people are so dignified. Yes, they are. Your impressions? Oh, they are, and I agree with that. I haven't been back there for quite a few years yeah. now, since the Civil War, but yeah. um, each, you know, each geography that we've been to taught us uh, and taught me stuff about uh, how different the world is yeah. and, and how people live and what's important to them culturally. And, and one of my biggest learnings of all of this has been um, culturally sensitized um, to um, how people have been brought up, where in which environment they've been brought up, um, as well as possibly how, how to engage with them. W was it a big cultural shift? Because obviously growing up as the son of a diplomat, you, you have to have an open mind, you have to have coping mechanisms, and you have to, as you're saying, be culturally aware I'd imagine that's a skill you need in running Neotel in a new country, in a, in a new environment. For the company, you think that's prepared you? I think it's helped. Um, I wouldn't say it's prepared me fully, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what surprises lie ahead. Uh, but it certainly helped. And um, South Africa has been very welcoming. And, and right. I think the people have been fantastic, both in Neotel and those that I've met. Uh, some of the stories that I've heard before coming here, uh, were, well, they're all dismayed in this context of it's, it's, a, it's a country quite similar to New Zealand and Australia, uh, one being part of the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. The braai and the barbecue culture the still works, rugby, and, and that's brilliant. Cricket, and the rugby, yeah. yes. I get to see more of that now than I didn't yeah. do before. <laughs> okay. But uh, there, there are a lot of cultural similarities um, that South Africa has with New Zealand and Australia. Uh, but equally important, I think it's uh, by being not so largely populous nations, mm. um, there, is a, there is a passion and a desire to do something, um, mm. and whether it's in the sport, sporting mm. arena or it's, it's in business. And, and we see that uh, South Africa, which is still a young nation in many ways, yeah. um, is building itself with very strong capability. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. So are you a bit compromised at the moment, I'd imagine, ahead of the World Cup. Which team are you going to support? Ooh, that <laughs> will be, time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, working in, in the Asia-Pacific uh, region, uh, working for an Indian multinational, what does that mean? Because obviously, India and South Africa have very strong historical links. Um, uh, you know, the non-aligned movement, uh, the liberation struggle. We have both shared the teachings of Gandhi. Those kinds of things is where we draw on um, for mutual support. And, and I know that the two leaders of the countries don't want to call this economic competition, but complementarity. That's yes. diplomacy, I think. Well, uh, yes, and, but there's a lot of similarities, including South Africa now being part of BRICS, and where S is equal to South Africa. And while uh, South Africa will never have the 1.3 billion of population <laughs> that China has, or 1.1 or thereabouts that India has, but certainly with, a, with the 48 million population in South Africa, it has an opportunity that is now uh, punching way above its weight mm -hmm. in size and scale, but to learn and learn from some of these large geographies and how they have evolved their respective economies mm -hmm. and enabled them to grow. And, and that's the opportunity where you see a lot of similarities where India has chosen to look at the knowledge economy and the knowledge worker right. as, as the medium for productivity and productivity gains right. and supporting the world. Uh, China has chosen the manufacturing uh, base and, and ensuring that uh, labor and, and the cost of manufacturing is, is cr you know, taken to a new uh, context. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a huge learning potential, and you're right, on the complementary element. Uh, but even in, in history, uh, back in the mid-1800s, we had a lot of Indians that 
Indian population that came to South Africa uh, for living here, and mm. and they do live here as well as uh, there's there's a very strong Indian context, and even mm. a lot of Bollywood movies are shot here as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of cross learnings that would occur. Um, both have very young population, which is in the working uh, age category, so uh, they, that presents opportunities for both South Africa and India to to work a lot closer, and there is a lot of uh, activity in that do, space. do you see that as part of your extracurricular responsibility, maybe, is when you're not in the boardroom trying to find those synergies, those skills transfer issues that we keep on talking about, what South African entrepreneurs can learn from Indian entrepreneurs, because with job creation, with enterprise development, we're yes. always looking for input. Yes, and, and I think not just me, I think there are a lot of people looking at synergies that would occur and where learnings can occur and how can they be implemented here. Education is, is a big focus area within South Africa and so it is in India as well. Mm. Healthcare is a big focus area in South Africa, mm -hmm. so it is in India with telemedicine mm. and facilities that are now being available. So in our discussions, and I don't spend that much of time in the board boardrooms, but um, <laughs> there, there well, is... Well, you should, according <laughs> to the auditors. <laughs> I'd like to spend time with the customers <laughs> and certainly with the auditors where required. <laughs> But um, there, there's certainly not uh, every opportunity that we can see where we can okay. bring synergies, I, I think we'll, we'll explore and, and see how we can bridge that. What are your greatest fears when you enter this market? Successful um, and failure. So when you combine the two, um, as you mentioned earlier, um, Neotel has been in, in the media a bit and, and obviously there was an expectation that uh, South Africa has of Neotel mm. as the earlier called the SNO mm. and the second ne network operator mm. as we're called. Mm. Um, but uh, the, the capability that we have built has given a huge confidence to us where we stand now. Mm. And so the, the we're, we're quite confident right now in terms of which way we're headed and the progress we're making right. the last four months that we're on the right track. And, and hopefully our customers will, will echo that in, in their own way. W when I look at you, and pardon me for saying it, you look cosmopolitan, modern, suave, you're articulate, right? You're the picture of the modern day businessman. And I'd say those were your strengths. Are those the things you tap into? What, what, what are the strengths you're really going to have to dig into to make this a success? I think it's understanding um, the local market and, and understanding the people that work within our business, but also the customers and, and the customers we serve. Because we exist only for our customers mm -hmm. and, and therefore um, to ensure that that connection of, of meeting their needs, um, not of today, but even of, of two to three years and, yeah. and years ahead, uh, requires us to be a little bit more um, perceptive of, of some of those upcoming needs. Mm. Um, and I see one of, one of my areas is, is reaching out to, to our customers itself and, and un understanding what they want, mm. uh, as well as with my team, um, and building that competency and capability right. within Neotel as well as with the people that are part of Neotel. In terms of your business education, who's been your greatest mentor? Um, in, in terms of uh, my business education, well, Mahatma Gandhi has been um, uh, a mentor, right. um, as has been my dad, um, in the context of of how you can influence um, an outcome to be achieved that is the right outcome uh, to get either for, um, a, in Mahatma Gandhi's case, in terms of um, just the world and, and the impact that he had, even in South Africa as mm -hmm. well as in, mm -hmm. in India. Um, but equally important is, is never give up. And, and no matter how hard things may seem and they can get, the, the best thing you can do is, is build that context of resilience and, and um, keep looking forward because the past helps you learn to not make the same mistakes in the mm -hmm. future, and, and hopefully you'll, you'll learn from the future as well. When I think Mahatma Gandhi, obviously I think Satya Graha and that whole passive resistance mm -hmm. thing. Uh, d do you apply that in your work, where you think to yourself, don't talk too much, just keep on keeping on? Um, I think I do talk too much, and I keep on keeping <laughs> on too. <laughs> Fly a bit of both. <laughs> But uh, communication plays a really important role um, in our business, not the, the, the service that we, we uh, sell or offer to our, the market, but more internally, even within the business that we are, that that's important for people to remain connected, and that's, the, that's why it necessitates communication. Mm. But continuing to move on becomes really important yeah. because nothing stays still anymore. Um, okay, and you said the uh, second inspiration is your father, the yes. greatest lessons, the greatest of the values he's taught you. My father came from a very humble beginning, and, and as he learnt um, himself and educated himself uh, without a lot of means, um, and obviously got into um, a diplomatic corps, um, gave me a sense of how you can come from almost having nothing to still achieve a lot in life. And a lot does not mean monetary, yeah. 
or materialistic, yeah. but how you can help um, a lot of people that you know and you care for, for them to grow and, and blossom as well. Mm -hmm. And that is, is what I've learned from my father. Yeah, absolutely. I've learned similar things from my parents. And finally, you're a baller, as they call it in the <laughs> United States. You play basketball. Yes. Why? Well, I think it was the six years that I spent <laughs> in the U.S. which ingrained that in me. But then I did both basketball and handball, and um, those What's were the, the games I loved. Uh, one has a hoop and the other one has a goal. Right. Yes. Okay. Now you've just helped me there. Okay. And you're an aspirant golfer? Uh, trying. Yes. <laughs> I think the divots <laughs> fly further than the ball at the moment. <laughs> so I'm not going to ask your handicap. Uh, but okay. I think just in, in closing, I mean, um, you seem a well-rounded, worldly, cosmopolitan, calm and confident uh, leader playing basketball, um, youthful, I think people would say. I mean, how would you like to be remembered? Because I, d I don't think you're going to be in Neotel forever and ever, but the impact you'd like to make whilst you're there. Well, I'd like to make a difference, uh, a difference for the positive, where we look back and we say there was a name uh, put inscribed, not just on myself, but the entire Neotel team yeah. that made Neotel what it will be in the future at that point when they look back. Oh, thank you so much for being here and thank being, you, very uh, you know, irreverent with us. And uh, we've enjoyed your energy, Sunil Joshi, who's the uh, new CEO of uh, Neotel, just talking us through some of the uncharted waters he has to wade through as he tries to make the company profitable. But uh, realizing that you know integrity is important from the lessons of Gandhi, humility, but uh, dogged determination lessons from his father. Those are the views of the new CEO of Neotel, Sunil Joshi, our captain of industry tonight. Goodbye.